And I say to you bishops and priests that are listening to me, please hear my heart today. Please hear what the Spirit is saying. It's time. It's time to get on our knees. It's not about theology. It's about neology. It's about time to get on our knees and ask God, Lord, would you fill me with your Holy Spirit? Lord, would you anoint my mouth like the prophet Isaiah said? The prophet Isaiah looked upward, inward and outward. Woe unto me. I'm an unclean man. I'm undone. And God anoints his tongue upward, inward and outward. Send me, Lord. I saw this video by Terry Quinn today and it really impacted me because, you know, I love this church. I love, you know, the faith. And I, and I really feel that everybody's called to encounter this amazing reality, which is to know our Lord Jesus Christ. So I want you to have a listen to this video because it's, I think every bishop and priest should hear what Terry has to say. Um, and, you know, there's so much happening in Ireland that, you know, it has to be, we have to get it out there. So just have a listen to this video. I think it's powerful and uh, I think really everybody has to has to hear it. And, uh, you know, pr please go to his channel, The Catholic Revert. And um, there's just amazing material. And Terry really has a lot to teach us uh, with his passion and his love for the faith. And uh, just have a listen to this video. God bless and happy Christmas. Take care. Bye bye. Hi everyone, this is a message primarily for the bishops and for the priests in Ireland and indeed the world and for the laity of course, for those who are called to preach and to teach the glorious gospel of the Lord. I believe that God is speaking to the Catholic Church today. I know there's so much division, there's so much getting saved and so much liberal theology flooding in and there's, there's confusion and there's priests don't know what to say, what to preach and they're actually getting told not what to preach by the faithful. We are living in desperate times. We're living in very challenging times. So that's why I had to make this recording primarily to the bishops and the priests and I pray that you'll get my heart. I pray that you don't be offended about what I'm about to say, what I believe God is saying to the church today. I've been privileged to be able to travel the world, to speak from small groups to groups of tens of thousands of people. And I, and I really have been privileged to be able to, to preach God's word. And I believe that God is calling the power of the anointed preaching of God's word again back into the Catholic Church. You see, the church at Pentecost was birthed by powerful preaching. The Bible says when Peter stood up, the eleven stood up with him. And Peter preached with such power and such anointing, the Holy Spirit fell on the people and their hearts were pierced, cut to the heart, the scripture says, and they cried out, what must we do to be saved? 3,000 men were added to the church to th that day. What are you saying, Terry? Well, since my return to the church, I am really, I'm saddened by the lack of anointing and the lack of power and passion behind the pulpits. People could say, well, Terry, you're a passionate guy. Am I? I'm quite a quiet guy at times. Passionate about God? Absolutely. When Jesus went into the temple, he was so angry, he took a whip, he kicked over the tables, and he quoted Isaiah and Jeremiah, and he said, zeal for thy house consumes me. The passion, quote Psalm 69, Jesus was so full of passion, but you've made my father's house into a den of robbers. Last week I was at a mass 34 minutes and it was over. The homily was over in three minutes and there was lifeless lecture. And I say that not to judge in any way, just to tell you the truth. You know what? Sometimes the unsaid has to be said. And that's my observation. And I've been in different churches and listen, I'm blessed. 
that I've got a priest who preached with such power, he's filled with the Holy Spirit, and he's challenging people with the gospel. The gospel confronts, the gospel challenges, the gospel is, is the power of God unto salvation. Roman one, Romans 1 verse 16, the Apostle Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God unto salvation. Bishops and priests, it seems to me that many clergy are ashamed of the gospel. Many of the clergy are just getting it over with quick, lifeless sermons. And people are leaving the church in their droves. We need the anointing of the Holy Spirit like never before. The Master said this. Jesus said this. It's not a new idea. But Jesus said this, go into the city of Jerusalem and you wait till you receive power from on high. And then, and only then, will you be my witnesses. Greek word, matrias, martyr. Then you will be my martyrs, my witnesses, but only then. And we know that in the upper room, where they were praying for nine or ten days, and the Feast of Shavuot and Pentecost in the temple, the power of the Holy Spirit fell upon them. And I say this, bishops, clergy, please hear my heart here. We've had plenty of classroom Catholicism. It's time for upper room Catholicism. We need it. Jesus said it. And for those of you who are watching and are thinking, this guy's challenging me. This is a bit much. No, 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 no. It's not Terry's idea. This is not... Teleology. This is what the master said. And these Bible students, these young men, followed Jesus for three and a half years and listened to his sermons and watched with watched him and watched how he preached, asked them how to pray. They were disciples, but Jesus said, You don't do nothing. No, 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 no. You're not doing anything. Till you're filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Isaiah 10 verse 27, it's the anointing that removes burdens. It's the anointing that breaks yokes. We need the anointing of God in our preaching. And it's this, this is in my heart. It's this, that's in my heart for the church today. We need to be training our clergy and our priests and lay faithful. There's powerful Lay preachers, and I'm one of them, they can bring a message to the faithful, a challenging message. But it's only with the power of the Holy Spirit. And I say to you bishops and priests that are listening to me, please hear my heart today. Please hear what the Spirit is saying. It's time, it's time to get on our knees. It's not about theology, it's about neology. It's about time to get on our knees and ask God, Lord, would you fill me with your Holy Spirit? Lord, would you anoint my mouth like the prophet Isaiah said? The prophet Isaiah looked upward, inward and outward. Woe unto me. I'm an unclean man. I'm undone. And God anoints his tongue upward, inward and outward. Send me, Lord. Send us, Lord, to preach the gospel. Our churches are being infiltrated by the spirit of this age. People are listening to television. They're watching Facebook. They're watching YouTube. They're watching all these latest gurus with all their ideas. And they're coming to church on Sunday and getting powerless sermons, lifeless lectures, instead of the power of the Holy Spirit on the Word of God. That's what I believe the Spirit is saying to the church today. Get back to your first love. Jesus said this in Revelation chapter 3, 19. I want you to go with me. Stop me, please. Priest, bishop, stop me. Put me and stop. And get your Bible. Go to the book of Revelation chapter 3. And we'll start from verse 19. And this is Jesus speaking to the church of Laodicea. Lod and verse 19 says this. To those whom I love, I rebuke. To those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. 
So be earnest and repent. Here I am, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him. I don't know how many times I preached that sermon, that, that scripture, as a Pentecostal pastor, as an international Bible teacher, and saw hundreds upon hundreds of people flood to the altar, repent. Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. And I don't know how many people responded to that because the Holy Spirit was under that anointed and the Holy Spirit moves in the Word. We see that in Genesis. The Holy Spirit moves in the Word. He's waiting for the Word to be preached and he moves in God's word. He doesn't move in some story or some joke. He moves on the word of God. And what that's what we need to be preaching today, the gospel. The Apostle Paul says, my gospel. We have to own that gospel. The gospel should be like a sword in our hearts. It should be, it should be slicing our hearts before it slices other people's hearts. This is warfare. We're in war. The Bible presents war from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. But to apply bishops and clergy, please hear my heart, but to apply proper exegesis to this, this scripture was not for the lost. It can apply to the lost. Jesus is knocking the door of your heart. This is for the church. I'm knocking on the door of your heart, bishops. Clergy, I'm knocking on the door of your heart. Would you open up and let me in? Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. There's never been a time, I believe, in the history of the church that the power of the preaching of the gospel was so needed. Ireland's gone. The land of saints and scholars that evangelised the world has become the most secular country in Europe. An atheistic society of young people. They want to kill the babies in the wombs of their mothers. I was privileged to go on a march in Dublin a couple of years ago and they heard the screams of the demonic people along those streets crying out and screaming abuse at us. Get your rosaries away from our ovaries. One banner said this. <laughs> One banner said this. If Mary had an abortion, we wouldn't be in this mess. My God, evil is coming at us. It's coming at the church. And we need to hear the voice of the master who's calling us to repentance, getting our knees before the almighty God and priests and bishops and archbishops and cardinals. Please hear my heart. Some people will say to me, Terry, you've been away from the church for a long time. What do you see? This is the biggest thing I see. We need to get back to the power of the gospel, the preaching of Christ crucified. The people need to hear the voice of God. They're desperate to hear a message from heaven, not a story, not a story about justice and, you know, global warming and all that's important, yeah. But they need to hear the gospel. Repent. This is serious business. This is Heaven or hell, bishops, priests, hear me. This is heaven or hell for your people and your congregation. And it seems to be in the church today that everybody's going to go to heaven. That's a lie. That's a lie from the pits of hell. That's not the gospel. But many people are believing that. Well, if I'm just a good person, if I do this, I do this. That's convenient Catholicism instead of covenant Catholicism. And I'm pleading with the clergy of Ireland and of the world to hear this voice 
those who were near to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, it's time to preach the glorious gospel like the Master said. We don't have to reinvent anything. Jesus said, wait till you receive power from on high. And so many priests say, well, I don't know. I don't need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Well, Jesus knows. And all four gospels, he said, I've come to set you in fire, to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. John the Baptist says, I'll baptize you with water. But he who comes after me will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Humble yourself, fathers. Humble yourself and receive the power of the Holy Spirit. And don't, don't block God. And don't, don't turn away. God, repent or else. This is what Jesus is saying in the scriptures. <laughs> Do you want some sugar with that? Bishops. Pastors. I just pray for those that are watching me. Who get my heart. Who hears the voice of the Spirit. You know, in my business... I have to continually have professional development. It's called continual professional development. I have to continually sit exams and make sure I'm up to date with the finance world. Where is the continual professional development amongst our clergy? When it comes to the things of the Spirit, when I'm talking about the anointing of God, the Bible says it's impossible to please God without faith. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Not those who casually inquire, now and then kind of attitude. Those who diligently seek him. So for those bishops and archbishops and cardinals and priests who are hearing my voice, hear the voice of the Spirit. It's time to encounter the power of the Holy Spirit in your ministry. You have been ordained by the church. You've been set apart by the Lord. Hands have been laid on you. Yes, there's been times of discouragement. Yes, it's challenging times. But it's time to rise back up. It's time to rise back up. This is war. You know, we have a scene in Scotland when the clans of Scotland were plundered. They would cry out this word, Riveresco! Riveresco! And it would be heard all over the hills, echoing. And Riveresco means, we shall rise again. We shall rise again. And I prophesy to Ireland. And I prophesy to the US. And I prophesy to Europe. And I prophesy to the nations. We shall rise again. Reveresco. We shall rise again. The anointing of God will flood the hearts of our bishops and the clergy and the lay people and the glorious gospel will be preached like never before. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Priests and fathers, please hear my heart. It's time for you and I to seek the Lord like never before. Don't ignore him any longer. That's why God raised up prophet after prophet after prophet. You know what? If the prophet keeps saying the same thing, maybe you're not obeying. Maybe the prophet's saying repent, 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 repent. And we're hearing that all across the world at the moment. Maybe it's time to repent. Maybe it's time for obedience. Please, please, don't switch me off. Please share this video with your fellow priests. Please share this with your bishop. Because I'm going to follow this up because I believe it's time to launch preaching school. School of preaching. I'm not just talking about homiletics. I'm not talking about how to put together. I'm talking about the anointing of God, the preaching anointing that Jesus told us about. The baptism of fire. That your tongue would be in fire. 
the Apostle Paul in, in 1 Corinthians 9, 16, he says, Woe unto me, I, woe unto me if I do not preach the gospel. Like Jeremiah says, the word of God is like fire in my bones, I can't contain it. Father, is that your experience? It should be your experience. You should be so excited every Sunday morning, ready to preach and to challenge the spirit of this age. They need to hear it. This is eternity, hangs in the balance. I was listening to Father Bob Bedard talking about evangelism and he was saying, you know, the reason why the Pentecostal churches are growing because they're preaching on evangelism. Do you know what? After 30 years as a Pentecostal pastor, it's true. We focus on the lost. Get people saved. Get them baptised in the Holy Spirit. Get them in. Get them healthy and get them going. Get them in. Get them healthy and get them going. I don't see much of that happening. I'm sure it's happening in pockets. I'm sure it's here and there. But generally speaking... I don't see that happening. I just seen people just getting the fastest mass in the West. 34 minutes at mass on Sunday and a three minute homily. I'm thinking, Lord, what is happening? And I believe Jesus is saying, give me back my church. Give me back my preachers preaching the gospel like never before. That when Francis would cease, he had the voice of the Lord. Francis, rebuild my church. My church is in ruins. Young ladies today in Ireland are abort in the wombs of the children, abort in the children. And what are we doing? Are we saying anything about it? Are we loving them? Speak the truth in love. Are we bringing compassion and love and, and, a, and a message that can change and transform lives? That's how the church was birthed. Their hearts were pierced and they said, what must we do? How do we live lives? Tell us. It seems like at the moment it's like a club. Like the Catholic Church is like a big club for people. Get in and get out as fast as we can. May God forgive us. What are we doing in Ireland? What's happened in Ireland? I asked a priest a few months ago, what plans do you have for evangelism? Nothing. And you know, he's very honest, we don't have any plans. Mass. Coffee morning. Nothing for evangelism. Nothing. Nobody reaching the lost. And they wonder why people are leaving the church. They wonder why people are, are rejecting the church. Yeah, we've, we've had the, 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 the scandals and all the rest of it. Do you know what? With the glorious gospel been preached, people will come back to Christ because Jesus Christ is Lord of Ireland. God sent St. Patrick to this land and he preached the glorious gospel and he cast out the demons from this nation and we need to rise up. And priests, if you're hearing my voice, I'm going to be launching preaching school on Ireland soon. I want you to come. Please come. Because this is going to be a day of learning. This is a day that's seeking the Holy Spirit and not moving an inch forward till you've been filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, I'm not so sure about that. But the Master is. Jesus is. Jesus said, no, you don't do anything till you get into the city. Then you shall receive power from on high. Father, if you're watching today and you think, this man's too much, maybe I'm not, I'm not too much at all. Maybe if Jesus came into your parish, maybe he would take a whip. I've had many Pentecostal pastors say, wouldn't it be great if Jesus came to your church and visited their church physically? Well, maybe he would take a whip. Maybe you would get the fright of your life how he would see your church. That's the passion of the Lord, when he first went to the temple, my father's house shall be called a house of prayer. And you're turning it into a den of robbers? A house of prayer? I was in mass last week and nobody sings. Nobody sings. It's few people upstairs, maybe a few women. Nobody's singing. There's no music. No atmosphere. 
Study the book of Leviticus. God's a God of atmosphere. Look at the book of Revelation and the angels singing, holy, holy, holy. You know what? For some people, when they get to heaven, they're going to have a nervous breakdown with the power of praise and majesty and worship. But it starts with the bishops and the clergy. You might not have heard this saying before, but please hear it out. Leadership's a problem, but leadership's the answer. Leadership is the problem, but leadership is the answer. And bishops, clergy, hear my heart if you get this. This is just, I'm just getting out with images now. And I'm going to do some follow-up teachings. I'm going to do some more teaching on this. Just to, 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 to expound more what it means to, to get involved in learning and teaching and training and have an insatiable appetite for the word of God, to be able to preach in such a way, there's a call to action. That's what happened at Pentecost. There was a call to action. And the living stood up with him. Priest, if you've got a bishop who's for this, if you've got an archbishop who's all for the renewal and he's, he's, he's sending you in courses and training and he's saying to you, get involved in preaching school, stand up with him like the living stood up with Peter on Pentecost. What a picture of unity. Obey your bishop who's looking to see the, 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 the church being transformed by the power of the gospel. Let me share something that's broke my heart when I read this. Because I, I, I don't see this happening anywhere, but I'm going to read this to you. To bishops and clergy of Ireland, please buckle up your belts. And for those in the different nations, listen, this applies to all of us. This is Pope Benedict, pastoral letter to Ireland, 2010. To the clergy and the faithful. I've just taken an excerpt of it. I propose that a nationwide mission be held for bishops, priests, and religious. Stop. I don't see that happening. If it's happening, I'm, I'll be the first to be corrected. But I've asked around. When I read this, I've asked around. Yeah, there's pockets here. I know. This is generalisation, and I know there's always people. There's always a remnant doing it. But this is Pope Benedict saying this. I propose that a nationwide mission be held for bishops, priests and religious. It is my hope, this is the Pope, that by drawing in the expertise and experience of preachers and retreat givers from Ireland and elsewhere, that you will rediscover the roots of your faith in Jesus Christ, a nationwide mission. Has that happened? We've had Pope John Paul II talk about a new evangelization. We've got Pope Francis saying that he wants everybody in the Catholic Church baptized in the Holy Spirit. There's a book in me called From the Pope to the Pews. Because I don't know what happens in between. I, I don't know what happens in between there. This is the Pope bringing a prophetic message to the clergy of Ireland, a nationwide mission. And it could be a nationwide mission in the USA, in different countries in Europe, a nationwide mission for priests and clergy to come back to the Master, to seek Him with all our hearts, that we would receive a new Pentecost. You see, Pope John the Twenty Third prayed for this, and the charismatic renewal was birthed all over the world. There can never, there can never ever be a new evangelization without a new Pentecost, and that's what we need to see happening amongst the bishops and the clergy and the laity of Ireland. Scotland, England, Wales, US, Spain, Portugal, all over the nations. I pray for a new Pentecost for our priests, our bishop, our clergy and 
are lay faithful preachers that God is raising up across the world. So watch out for my next message on preaching school and the power of anointed preaching. God bless you.